Hi, welcome to today's video. My name is Paul. So this week I'm doing some watercolor landscape painting, but it's watercolor um, without the color. So usually I use Sennelier watercolor paint. I okay, I usually use a limited palette, just a few colors. My favorite being blues and yellows. But in this case, well, I'm not using Sennelier paint. I'm using an old tube of Windsor & Newton paint. Um, I think it's called Neutral Grey or something like that. It's when you squeeze it out of the tube, it's almost black, almost, but not quite. It's a very, very dark grey. This type of painting where you're removing colour, um, you might think, well, well, why? What's the point? Um, why would you do that? It's a bit like trying to communicate with someone um, but you're not allowed to use adjectives for example so you can still communicate you can still communicate some quite complex ideas but you are still limiting yourself by just by removing the adjectives so it's a simplistic analogy but you know it's a similar sort of idea when you remove color from painting you're removing one way in which you can communicate with the viewer of the final uh, painting. And I think one way of looking at art is it is a kind of communication between you as the artist and the person or the people who are looking at your art in some way. It's not a direct communication, it's, but it is a kind of communication, I think. But anyway, there are different reasons why you might want to do this. Uh, one of them being is just, I like it. Um, I like painting this style. I used to do a lot of charcoal landscape drawings, just using simple charcoal, no colored charcoal or anything like that. Just basic willow charcoal. I like the look, that sort of simplistic look. It is limited, but I do enjoy creating landscapes just in black and white or monochrome. Here are four examples. Um, there's some other reasons why you might want to try this as a little exercise. Even if you don't like the final results, there's still maybe some value in doing this. So maybe when you look at these four examples, I think the brush marks and the overall the little details are maybe more visible when you remove color because there's in a way there's less to look at so you maybe notice those little things like brush marks and different marks you know if you're using a dry media for example and those you know becoming aware of that is a useful skill especially i think if you're doing sort of abstract non-representational landscapes like I do, all those little brush marks, the little marks that you can make add something to the, the painting. Um, they add some aesthetic value, I think. There's other reasons why you might want to try this. Um, again, when you're getting started in art, whether it's landscape painting or whatever, and using any medium, it doesn't really matter. One of the skills that can be useful to learn is to see past the color and to see the values. So if you can see things in values rather than color, that is a useful skill as well because the values that you use can help to define the, the sort of structure, the composition of your painting, I think. So I, it is a useful skill to learn. One more idea. And there are probably lots of reasons why this might be useful. But one more idea might be if you're getting started with watercolor. So watercolor is quite different in a number of ways from other paints like acrylic or oil or gouache. One of the differences is with those other media like acrylic or oil paint. If you started with a black or a dark gray and you wanted to make a lighter gray, you would usually, I guess, add white. I'm not, I don't paint in those media, but I guess that's how they do it. They add white. With watercolor, of course, it's different. You're not adding, um, you're starting with the dark gray or black. And by adding 
or changing the amount of water to pigment in the brush. That's how you get the lighter values. And that's a skill that you have to learn because you also have to learn how to control the amount of water in the brush. If there's too much water or too little water, you're, you're going to get either wet and wet effects or you're going to get dry brush effects, which you may or may not want. So learning to control all of that is really the skill that you have to learn with watercolor. It's one of the main things just to get the watercolor to do what you want it to do. And it's maybe one reason why some people say watercolor is more difficult medium to work with. I don't know. Um, I don't have much experience with acrylic or oil or the other types of paint, so I'm not sure. So there are some maybe useful skills that you can learn or enhance by doing this sort of exercise. I think also if you're feeling as though you're stuck, uh, you know, you've been, you feel as though you're doing the same thing over and over again, sometimes putting a limitation on yourself, like saying, okay, I'm not going to use any color for this next painting or drawing. That is one way of, you force yourself to use more creativity or more imagination to overcome that sort of limitation, maybe. So I guess what I'm saying is there might be some value in doing this type of uh, painting, just monochrome or black and white or whatever you want to do. And as I say, at the end of the day, I do it sometimes just because I enjoy it and I like the final results. Um, I like color, of course, color's great, but sometimes doing things black and white, it has its own sort of appeal to me anyway, aesthetic appeal. Anyway, if you get it this far in the video, thank you for watching and listening and hopefully see you again in next week's video.